So today I'd like to show you how I transfer an animation from Blender over to Keyshot. But why not just render in Blender? Of course we could, but this is a tutorial for Keyshot users. Sometimes you need an animation that shows a part bending, stretching, or deforming. And you simply can't do that with Keyshot alone. Now there are plenty of videos online about how to animate in Blender. However, this video is only going to cover exporting animations from Blender and importing them into Keyshot. If you want to follow along and try this out on your own, you can download the project files as well as an export cheat sheet that I've made for quick reference. Just visit the file vault linked down below. So here I am in Blender. First I modeled this plastic buckle, then I made an armature that has a few bones. When I select the armature, you can see a few keyframes in the animation timeline. These keyframes save the position of the bones at the beginning, middle, and end of the bending motion. Once the mesh of the buckle has been bound to the armature, it can then bend following the movement of the bones, creating the bendy motion that we want. Now, if you're like me and you come from a CAD background, then using armatures to create an animation is likely a new concept. While teaching how to use them is far outside the scope of this tutorial, I just wanted to outline the steps I took in order to get to this point. Keyshot can import deformation animations from two file formats. We have FBX sequence and Alembic sequence. And based on my latest tests, FBX worked and Alembic did not. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to a bug or user error on my part. Uh, at the time of this recording, I am in Blender 4.0 and Keyshot 2024.2. Okay, so now it's time to export our animation. In Blender, we want to go to File, Export, and FBX. Here, the only setting I want to change is in the Bake Animation section. We'll disable Force and Start and Keying. I found that leaving this enabled just prevents the animation from working in Keyshot. So we want to make sure that we manually have those keyframes inserted. So we want one on the first and last frame within our Blender timeline. After that, we're going to click Export. Now inside a Keyshot, I'll just drag the FBX file into the real-time view. The default import settings should work, but if not, here are my settings for reference. Next, I'll quickly add a plastic material onto the buckle to make it easier to see. Then we want to press A on the keyboard to expose the animation timeline. We should see an orange animation node in the animation timeline, and we can press play to watch it play back. One word of caution, if you're going to enable motion blur in Keyshot, it's not going to work properly on the part we just imported. This is because Keyshot uses substeps to calculate motion blur, and these are not created by default in Blender when exporting our animation as an FBX sequence. So in the example on screen, you can see how the lower buckle doesn't really have motion blur. This is what's going to happen if we use the method I've shown you. Luckily, there is a way to get the smoother, better looking motion blur that you see on the top example. And that's what I'm going to show you now. To force Blender to create substeps, we can stretch the animation by a factor of 32 before we export it. This makes the animation really slow, but then in Keyshot we can speed it back up to normal speed, and we will have created 30 substeps, which in Keyshot will be used to calculate the motion blur. Now one downside to this approach is that it could make your FBX file quite a bit larger, though in my simple example that I used here, the difference is negligible. I'm excited to share with you the Keyshot Animation Masterclass. This course will guide you through my proven method of creating professional quality product animation videos. From research and inspiration, to planning and execution, to post-production, delivery, and archiving, I've covered the entire process beginning to end. With a runtime of about 20 hours, it's the most comprehensive course you're going to find on product animation. To see a full breakdown of chapters, lessons, project files, and more, follow the link below. So to do this, back in Blender, I'll click on the armature and then hover over the animation timeline. I'll press the A key to select all keyframes and make sure the current frame is set to zero. Then press S and X to scale along the X axis, and then 32 on the numpad to scale by a factor of 32. We'll also need to make the timeline 32 times longer, which we can do by changing the timeline length to 30 times 32, which is 960. Now, if I scrub along the timeline, the animation plays more slowly. We'll export the FBX with the same settings as before, and then import into Keyshot using the same settings we did earlier. Now in Keyshot, if all went well, we should see a really long animation has been added to our timeline. All we need to do now is scale it back down to 30 frames, or one second, which was the original length of my animation in Blender. The buckle should now be moving at the correct speed, and if we enable motion blur, it should show the motion blur correctly. 
So if you need to rely on Blender for some deformation animation, but you're still using Keyshot for final rendered output, I hope this tutorial comes in handy, saves you a bit of troubleshooting. And until next time, happy rendering. I just realized I forgot to wear my white t-shirt.